Okay, welcome back guys here on Blueprint Vending Direct. Hope all is well. Um, Andre, really just to go through a number of questions that um, a lot of our followers, viewers um, have been asking. Um, and I think what we need to do is kind of provide a little bit more detail around them as well. Um, so what we're gonna do guys is for those of you that are looking to get into the vending business and thinking about it and maybe you're still on the fence um we're just gonna go through some of the questions that you fired at us and then we're just gonna go a little bit more in depth on them and hopefully that might help to move you that one step closer to getting into the game would you getting say? started yeah, <laughs> yeah getting started um so i would probably say these are the, the five most commonly asked mm, questions yes, agreed in terms of all of our viewers we get these questions over and over and over again so we thought you know what we hear these questions so much we might as well just put it on video and then it's there for everyone to see but to be fair some of the questions i think these were the questions that i had when yeah, I we asked, yeah we, we asked yeah we, we asked the same questions we asked the same questions yeah so the first question was um licensing you know to get in the game you know what sort of license or certification do you need to to start in the vending business so funny question because <laughs> i don't know i don't know what it is i don't believe i had this question myself when no, i got started no, i don't I think did. so i did yeah. um maybe because when i got started it was actually like this watching videos on youtube and uh the guy that i was watching he probably mentioned that mm -hmm. you don't actually need certification yeah. or licensing or anything like that now that was in the USA, by the way, but in the UK, it's, it's quite similar. So mm -hmm. think of it as um, like a mini shop. That's, that's all it is, really. It's a, it's a shop. It's, a, it's an off license, a corner shop, a smaller version with less yeah. stress, <laughs> less headache. <laughs> OK, so essentially, there's no license as such that you're going to need to get started in vending. You could uh, buy a vending machine tomorrow um go and speak to your local hairdressers or barber shop they agree to put it in there and then away you go you start selling goods out of your vending machine yeah. um to qualify that question when it says licensing or certification depending on where you place your vending machine you may need some sort of uh, license or approval or permission mm -hmm. to place your vending machine there um, I remember one of the, the viewers that we had on a, a TikTok live that we yep. did, she had a brilliant idea. I don't know if she's watching this, but if you're watching this and you haven't yet taken up that idea, you're, you're, you're wasting time. But her idea was to put a vending machine by the seaside yeah, yeah and vend yeah, yeah. seaside items, towels, beach, beach towels, um, um, mini umbrellas in case it rains. All Excellent different, idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seaside stuff. Right. Now, I can imagine it in my head. Mm -hmm. It's on the seaside. It's on, you know, near the beach. It's probably in, you know, in a place that you may need permission to put it out in that public place. Mm -hmm. So in terms of licensing and certification in general, no, but be, bear in mind, it might depend on where you place the vending yeah. machine. Because these types of places are more like with local authorities yeah. and that sort public of stuff. Public places. Yeah, public places. Public places. Yeah. So to be safe, <laughs> so, so that you don't say, oh, but Andre and Daniel <laughs> said, I would say always check with your local council anyway, just to make sure. But you know that if you're putting it into a private business, there is no uh, certification or licensing as such that you need. Yeah. I think in terms of where well, we're on the realm of certification, I would say definitely, you know, obviously, of course, um, if you put in a vending machine in, make sure your vending machines are pack tested. Please. 100%. 100%. Yeah. For those that don't know what a pat test is. Yeah. So your pat tested is just to make sure that the electrical appliance that you use is compatible with the location and the venue and it ticks all the boxes um, in terms of its safety and it's not going to start tripping out or blowing things up because <laughs> yep. they will be on the phone to you. So it's a health and safety. It's a standard regulation that a lot of buildings um, must meet. And you want to make sure that if you're putting your machine in there, you're meeting the criteria to work alongside with them in terms of providing your service. And being yeah. safe. 
um, what you'll notice on most electrical goods, I don't want to take it too far, but you'll get a little sticker on the side of most electrical goods, mm -hmm. your yeah. fridge or, or vending machine, for example, and it would say pack test and it will have a date. So if you're buying a, a vending machine, you want to check that little sticker. And if you've got a vending machine, you want to check the date yeah. on the little sticker, get it updated and yeah. make sure it's good to go. Fantastic. Yeah. Moving on to the next one. So question <laughs> two, and we hear this one all <laughs> yeah. the time. Okay. So how much commission should I pay to the vending location? Mm -hmm. I think it comes down to, look, you're operating a business. All right. So first things first is that if I go into somewhere, I'm looking at how to enhance their services. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at how to provide a service for these guys to be able to give a better service offering to their customers. So I'm looking at ways of uplifting their service and providing a service to them. So should they be paying or should I be should they be paying um, you for me? The service? um for that service or should it be me paying them for that service like we've got to look at we we have a we have a system here it's, they pay for what they eat you know we provide free services this is where we can get away with saying that we provide you know free bespoke services to to you um and you shouldn't have to be paying any form of commission i believe so to a location um however that being said you run in a business, let's say you went into a location that has a very, very high footfall and, you know, the, the turnover is quite good. They understand that it's quite good. Then you might work out that maybe a small percentage given to them is still going to be really profitable for you and also keep them sweet as well. So it's on that sort of needs led basis. But the first port of call is to walk in there and sort of say, no, I'm actually giving you a service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And therefore, you know, you shouldn't have to be paying to help someone. Definitely agree with that. And, and one thing to keep in mind, going off the back of what you said, Dan, mm. is that um, if you're brand new in vending, you've got to bear in mind that if this company, this uh, site location was to go out and try to uh, get a vending machine on loan, let's say, or, or get a vending machine service from one mm. of these big companies, these huge vending companies, the truth is that they would actually be paying the vending company. That's right. That's right. That's so, right. That's right. You know, we've come across sites. In fact, we've got a site that when we first went into the site, a business center, uh, they had a coffee machine and they were paying eight hundred pounds a month for this coffee machine service. Yep. So I came along and said, "Oh, hey, we're, we're offering you this vending machine service with drinks, snacks, crisps, everything involved, free of charge." They bit my hand off. Yeah, hundred percent. So you can see, you can see how it works. You know, you're offering the service; they could be paying you. So the fact that you're saying to them, you know, this is going to be free of charge for your staff, for your customers. Really, should we be paying a commission? Should we have a, a rental profit split? Probably not. Exactly. And then what you're doing in effect is you're you're finding savings for them. You're actually saving them money by doing that. So these, you're walking in and actually being someone saving grace. This is what you've got to remember, your mindset. Because naturally, when you do walk into a, a venue to maybe pitch a sale, you're thinking of all of these things. And actually, it's the reverse. And when you actually look at the reverse side of it, you realize how powerful you actually are in terms of the service that you have to offer. And that should encourage you to go in and start knocking on as many doors to say, look, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to save you money. You know, I'm actually here to provide a, a better service offering to all of the tenants or customers that are coming through the center. So you're so. adding value mm -hmm. is the key word. That's the key, is adding the key. value. If you remember the value that you're adding, then that question of should mm. I be paying a commission, should I be paying a rental, that sort of fades away from yeah. your thought process because you realize how much value that you're actually adding. Mm -hmm. that's, that's brilliant. Moving on, you know, gain, you know, how much will it cost for me to get started? Again, brilliant question and, yeah. a, and a very common question. Probably the, the first question that comes into mind when people think of um, starting a, a vending machine mm -hmm. um, business, even as a side hustle, yeah, yeah. how much is it going to cost me to start? And the truth is, it can vary. Mm -hmm. um, if we were to look at a round number, I would probably say that you want to put around £2,000 yeah. aside yeah. As, a, yeah. as a safe yeah. way of getting started but you can get started for much, much less. Yeah. 
Yeah. So if we were to break down the numbers, let's say we were to take that two thousand pound as an average, and we were to say um, for the actual vending machine mm-hmm, itself, mm-hmm. you could get a really good uh, refurbished vending machine for about um, eight nine hundred pounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, we're going to go through later where to find these vending machines, but mm-hmm. eight nine hundred pounds, you should be able to get a good quality vending machine. Yeah. Then you're looking at the costs of moving your vending machine, yep. installing your vending machine. Mm-hmm. So unless you have a, a van yourself, and in particular a Luton a van Luton. with a, with a tail lift, because mm-hmm. these these vending machines are very heavy, um, so you'll need a Luton van. You probably need a pump truck. Pump truck. Yep. Yeah, to move mm-hmm. the machine safely, because again, it's very heavy. You don't want that falling over. Um, you're going to need money for stock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your first stock. Uh, that you're going to put into your vending machines probably going to cost you around uh, 350 to 400 pounds to completely mm-hmm. fill the machine you're going to need uh, some money for the change the change mechanism within the machine so you're going to need about 40 to 50, 50 pounds worth yeah. of coins mm-hmm. that goes back to your customers when they pay and they receive mm-hmm. change so all in all you're looking at about two thousand yeah. pounds on average now I'm sure we'll go through it later in the questions, but I've I've managed to secure vending machines. We've managed to secure mm-hmm. vending machines for free in the past. Okay, so there's various ways you can get vending machines, but as a standard, you're looking at about two thousand pounds. Yeah, yeah. Anything to add on that? No, that's it. I'd say yeah, definitely um, about two grand. Also, just remembering if you're investing your money, look at your things like your return on your investment. Um, is always important, and obviously crunch your numbers and. Um, with your sites, you've got to kind of give yourself a rough sort of projection on what you feel your return is going to be on a monthly basis and how long it's going to actually uh, going to take for you to get that return on your investment as well. And I don't think for a startup business, two grand um, to get yourself going and making what you, some, some semi-passive income is, you know, bad at all. I, I yeah. think that's really good. That is good. You know? That is very good. I mean... Yeah. Most startup businesses, if you look at um, sort of how much it's going to cost you, and not only that, how long it's going to take you mm-hmm. to make the money back, most investments, let's say, you're looking at at least a year or two mm-hmm. to make your money back. In vending, you're probably looking at about a year as well in most in most instances, but that depends on the location. Location, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, good locations. I've seen return on investments in as quick as, you know, three, four months. Yeah, even less. Less two than Two months, that. yeah. Definitely. Agreed. Yeah. So I hope that answers that one for you. Uh, By the way, even though we are going through these questions and answers, uh, feel free to add your comments into the comment section. And if there's anything we've missed from these answers or you want to clarify any of the answers, let us know in the comments and we'll uh, we'll do our best to get those answered for you. Uh, So next question, Dan, where is the best place to buy a vending machine? All right. I'm going to be very biased with this one. Is that all right? Yeah, well, I'm going to go for it. Blueprint Vending has its own Facebook page. Yeah. And how many members do we have assigned to that page? Uh, just under 3,000 now. 3,000. And there's machines selling. Every day almost. Yeah. All the time. All the time. And, you know, we're, we're able to look into that, vet that, and make sure that these are good, genuine offers before we actually release them out for people to actually purchase. So mm-hmm. there's like a, a safety net. So there are Facebook pages that I think we're probably like the only, with the only UK um, that I know of, that, I know of yeah. Yeah. Um, that you can do that. But then there's other places like eBay, um, again, uh, other trusted sources, Gumtree is another place. Um, where else would you say? Um, and you've got wholesalers, you've got yeah, actual wholesalers, vending wholesalers. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, looking at it, let's say, what's the difference between buying from a wholesaler to an eBay to a Facebook to a Gumtree? Uh, you're probably, and then you've got new vending machines that you could also buy, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, getting started in vending, would you say that they need to buy a new vending machine? Nope. Why, why, why would you say that they don't? I agree with you. Yeah. Why, why would you say they don't? I, I would say that they, I think the, the moment, I think in terms of what the service that we're offering, the I've seen the refurbished ones doing just as a good a job than these newer machines that have got these high value markups in order to provide so much profit. Because remember, the people who are buying brand when you're buying a brand new machine, it's a company who's selling that machine to 
of for its purpose to make profit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't need to get into that type of game. You just want to look at somebody who's maybe flipping something on um, and just trying to to just liquidate it mm -hmm. and allows you to get into the game. Remember, it's a business. You're trying to keep your costs down, um, and you've got something that's cheaper that's doing the job. Um, so, do you need to go down that whole brand new route? No, it's yeah. just too costly. Um, it's going to take a longer time for you to get your return on the investment. Exactly. Um, and you, you don't need it all shiny, sparkly like that. It's, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. And, and funny enough that you say, say sparkly and shiny because some of the, these refurbished vending machines that I've seen, they look new. They are. They, they they're are. well looked after. They, looked they look after. new. Um, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference if you had a new vending machine on one side and a refurbished on the other. You, you wouldn't you know tell. which one was which. You can't tell. Okay. And I, I normally uh, sort of let people know that it's like your fridge at home. These things are made to last mm -hmm. for yeah. a very long time in a, in a good way with good materials most of the time. So a vending machine that's five years old or a vending machine that's brand new is probably going to work just as effective mm -hmm. as, as each other, to be honest with you. So if you're looking at a, a, a vending machine wholesaler, you're probably going to get refurbished machines. What's the difference? Well, it probably means that they've, they've taken the machine in, they've cleaned it up, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. probably taken out the most important parts and, and cleaned those parts up, mm -hmm. serviced the machine, you know, given it a little bit of WD-40 yeah. <laughs> yeah. or whatever, you know, oiled the joints a little bit and done their checks, tested it, tested all the selections, make sure it's all working before they now put it back out for sale. Then if you're looking at an eBay, an eBay, you've got a mixture of uh, the general public and these wholesalers, wholesalers that, yeah, yeah. that sell on eBay. Yeah, yeah. We, we know quite yeah, a few yeah. on, on eBay that are doing this. So that's why the prices on eBay will be slightly yeah. higher than you would find in other places. Then you've got your Gumtree and your Facebook marketplace, which for me, those are the ideal places yeah. for a new person to... Yeah. to find yeah. their very first vending machine. Number one, because you've got a chance of finding a vending machine for, for very, very, very... There's gems on there. Yeah, right? low cost or free in some cases. Okay, I've picked up, I think, two or three vending machines for free. Zero, zilch, no money. Uh, because a company was just clearing out their offices mm -hmm. in, in, in the city. Yeah. And um, there, was a, there was a gym, a yoga gym in South London, and she wanted to get rid of the vending machine because she didn't, she didn't need it. Mm -hmm. So she said, yeah, come and pick this up. Nominal fee, like £200 or something. And I, and I collected the machine. So personally, I would say Facebook Marketplace, number one. Gumtree, number two, because there's not much choice on there. Then if you have to, eBay, and then and last but not least, um, wholesalers. Yeah, 100%. Personally. Mm. All right, so moving on, guys. Uh, how do we find a vending location? Like, what do we do? Okay, so probably uh, in terms of importance, this might be the most important question out of the frequently asked yeah. questions because, in my opinion, it's probably the, I say, hardest part of the whole vending business um, because buying a vending machine is easy enough you know you just take your time look for a good deal um buying the stock again find a wholesaler find some good deals mm -hmm. put that stock in your machine but actually finding a vending location you kind of need a little bit of um skill and a little bit of patience 100 percent, as well mm -hmm. so for me personally i say it's like a it's a numbers game like most things in in sales or when you're presenting or trying mm -hmm. to sell a, a, an idea or a service You've got to make sure you're speaking to enough people to get the no's out of the way before you get the yeses. You might be one of the lucky ones that speaks to 10 companies and, and you know you get two or three yeses. But in general, you're going to need to speak to about 30, 40, 50 locations before you get your mm -hmm. first yes. Uh, personally, I prefer speaking to these businesses face to face yeah. just because I'm used to speaking to, you know, people face to face in terms of selling but you've got uh, cold calls you can do cold calls it might take you more calls than it would face to face but you can still do that and then you've got cold emails yeah so you know these days we've got chat gpt that can help you write a little script out you've got you know you've got us we put out a, a, an ebook that comes with a free script for finding locations yeah. 
So there's so many tools out there for scripts and guides on what to say. And the rest of it is just down to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. Getting the numbers, I would say. 100%. And also think about like just your local area. I mean, how many times have you gone past these like light industrial areas mm -hmm. and you're sitting there thinking, how did these guys in this warehouse get food? And then yeah. you see, have you ever seen sometimes these little um, mobile uh, burger food, trucks. food trucks? Where are they going? Why are they going in these locations? Mm -hmm. Those food trucks, they're not there all day, you know. No. They're there for like lunchtime. Yeah, Once that food, <laughs> But they're there because these people don't have access to local convenience stores to get food. And what happens when the night staff goes there? There's no, yeah. food, there's no... There's no, there's no burger, there's no burger van there. There's exactly. none of these types of things. What, what they need is, is something that's going to provide that convenience. Warehouses, plug points, lots of space, easy access to get inside. We driving past opportunities all the time. And it's only now we're having this conversation. I'll bet you, you know, even in the comments later on, come back onto this video and you'll be like, you know what? I was driving around, you know, and I was like, ping, 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 mm -hmm. ping, ping. Now, the difference is, is a matter of you just pulling up and saying, hi, you know, my name is blah, blah, from, from wherever you are from. This is what we can do. This is how we can make it more convenient for your staff. This is how we can make it more productive for the service that you're providing because your staff ain't having to travel, you know, to a petrol station to pay, you know, crazy prices for a drink. This there in their service. So, um, so it's going to help things for like the staff and it's also going to help for customers. It's going to look good. So these are all the little things that you're just driving past them every single day. Um, also, I think, you know, we spend a lot of time on social media, right? Mm -hmm. How many followers do you have? How many friends do you have in my face? Well, I think, you know, I've, I've, Let alone yeah, your, yeah. your phone book, your phone book. Mm -hmm. There's going to be someone in your phone book, someone in your Facebook that's probably working in somewhere that could do with this service. Definitely. Ask them. Definitely. And just to piggyback on that, I remember when I used to work in retail, and uh, again, we had no sort of food services, no convenience in our store. So at lunchtime, I used to have to go out 20 minutes to get something at lunchtime. But that means that I lost 20 minutes of my lunchtime, yeah. of my break time, just walking mm -hmm. there and back. So talking about providing a service, you're actually doing a very, very good service mm -hmm. to the company as a whole, because it means you're going to have happier staff because they don't lose their break time and they can actually enjoy the time that they're supposed to be, yeah. you know, resting or relaxing exactly. or recuperating or re-energizing mm -hmm. um, rather than walking to and from the shops. Exactly. Um, definitely yeah. important. Also thinking about, you know, the items that you have in the vending machine, like what's actually going to really help people is like, you might think it's going to be crisp drinks. No, think about things that are like high in protein. Think about things like water. All of these types of things are going to be helping people to keep hydrated in, in these uh, types of locations and places that you're going to be going. So, you know, when you're thinking about looking for locations in terms of what you're offering and the services, like straight away, you're thinking about, you know, you know, all these people are going to want something to drink, you know? Um, so think about that. Think about hydration. Where are these guys getting water? You know, they need a vending machine. I think this, well, this time of year, we're sort of like tripling up. Yeah, tripling drinks up are going absolutely crazy. Yeah. So if you see our social media, you see sometimes we post up our vending machine, like, from today and then three days later and the drinks are just totally gone because obviously the weather. Um, but I want to give you guys a little challenge. Uh, yeah. By the time we post up the next video, I want to see in the comments uh, what you've done. So I challenge you to go on um, your Google Maps or whatever it is that you can use to see your local area and just go down the road, go down your local roads, go down your local main roads, your local... Um, industrial mm -hmm. areas and have a look at the different types of businesses that are there and ask yourself, would these people benefit from having a vending machine? If so, go there or call them or send an email and get the ball rolling because that's essentially how you start. That's all you got to do. And I think if you was to go out there and do that, and let's say you had five potential locations, you haven't found a, a vending machine, you haven't done any of these things yet. You've just gone around, you've looked at sourced the venue and you've gone in and found out that these people are actually asking for it. This is going to encourage you. You're going to see an opportunity and you're going to be sitting here going, the difference is just me going out there, getting a vending machine and just getting started.
Best way to get started is to get started, right? That's and it. learn as you go. That's it. You're always yeah. going to have questions. We don't know everything. Even still mm. years and years being in the industry, mm. we still don't know everything. So don't think that you can't get started just because you don't know something very specific. Mm. And if you don't know something very specific, just ask. Yeah. But don't let those questions stop you from, from getting started. 100%. Because I remember even back in the day, I remember we were speaking to you and you were saying about, you know, um, dotting the I's and crossing the T's sometimes can slow you down, mm. you know, because you sit there and you just overthink, right? And that's what we do as, uh, as humans. We just sit there and overthink stuff and we're not actually making any kind of movement, you know? Um, so if you are looking to get started, you know, get started. Um, and, you know, there will be things and challenges along the way like there is in life. But that's where we learn and that's how we get better. But guys, those are your main questions that you've asked. We've answered those now. And if you're, you know, if you're looking for support or vending service that's going to help you in the game, it's going to help you moving forward, you know, Blueprint Vending here is here to help. Um, we run training courses. We're, uh, we're on the phone. We have locations that are available for people to, to purchase and start. We have machines that are able to, 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 able to get you up and running. Um, and we provide that support. So, you know, get in touch, get in touch. If you want to come on to our training program, if you want to purchase the ebook and you want any more information, we're here to help you guys. So, um, yeah, Blueprint Vending, over and out. That's it.